All right, welcome to section 1.1. In addition to what you're going to find on the publisher's website, I wanted to create some instructional type of material here that's created by me so that you can get a feel for um, what it, what's important to me uh, on the tests and other things, but also just so you can have it explained um, by someone else. And so when you're in section 1.1, there's some several key ideas, actually two main ones, how data is collected and practical versus statistical significance. So here I'm going to just go over some definitions that you probably already read in the book or were exposed to, um, but I just wanted to put them in a different language. So how data is collected is very important. Um, ideally we're going out and collecting data randomly where we don't have any bias or anything and we're just taking all the data in that we get. Um, and so they're going to have you look at some situations in section 1.1. There's really no math type of work to do. It's only understanding. And that's what's different about this class is it's more of an understanding and application as it is a, a big number crunching class um, and certainly not anywhere near the level of uh, manipulation needed in algebra. However, algebraic reasoning is needed in this and the ability to critically think. And that's what we'll get out of this. And so what they're going to have you do is look at some situations to decide, you know, was a data collected in some way, in, in some good way or some bad way? Obviously, it's collected in some way, but we want to just judge whether we should rely on that data or if there's a cause for us to be a little bit concerned. And so one of the first things they're going to point out is a voluntary response. Sometimes called a self-selected survey. So what we mean by that is a survey in which individuals are themselves choosing to be a part of it. Um, sometimes it's the best that we can do, but ideally we're avoiding that. So a voluntary response is really not a great way to collect data. And the reason for that is you tend to get pretty opinionated people people who feel strongly one way or the other. So for example, if I said, um, if I ran a, a poll maybe online that says, tell me how you feel about the coronavirus and whether you feel it's an actual threat. I'll get individuals on both sides really, kind of the polar opposites letting me know their opinions, but the middle ground tends not to to respond. Um, and sometimes we, we segment out part of our population. So for example, ideally what I would get if I were wanting to take the numbers for maybe Folsom, right? We have Folsom Lake College. If I wanted to just survey the residents of Folsom and I did an internet survey, it's possible that I wouldn't reach everybody because they maybe weren't able to be see my survey, they weren't on that platform, or maybe they don't have um, a socioeconomic status that allows them to have um, internet access to, to gain their opinions, but their opinions nonetheless are ones that I care about. And so sometimes you'll read a response in here and you'll say, hey, that's not good. And the, the fault with this thing is that there was a voluntary response. And so we would say that, that it's flawed. So flawed data means, or flawed data collection is not good data collection. They use that word in our homework, whether something's flawed or not. And the other one that's opposite that is sound. Sound data is collected in a good way. So if I wanted to know um, something like um, the average height of everybody in our class, I could randomly select individuals, which means I would allow everybody to have the same chance of being selected. So from a visual point of view, putting everybody's name in a hat and drawing a name out, that would be a, a random sample and that would be a sound sample, something that's not flawed. The other thing they're going to ask us to pay attention to is bias. If something's bias, it means that um, someone has, uh, I don't know how best to say this, someone has a vested interest, someone has an interest in the outcome of the survey. 
So a small example could be um, gun laws. If we surveyed maybe a, a thousand people, thousand people got surveyed and we found out that 75% are in favor of um, allowing individuals to have concealed weapons permits. Right? And I'm just doing this to just space it out. If I found out that that survey was done by the National Rifle Association, um, I might not believe that because the National Rifle Association has a vested interest, has a particular interest in the outcome of that survey. And so they're going to have us read situations to look to see if there's bias or not. And so it's relatively small in scope. I'm hoping that it's not overwhelming as you're in there, but I just wanted to give some examples. So. I'm going to leave that space blank for um, for another definition that will come. But here's a question that is in the book. And the question is really, is there a bias? So here it says, the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine tends to oppose the use of meat and dairy products in our diets. And they have received hundreds of thousands of dollars in funding from the foundation to support animal protection. And the question that they're asking is, is there... A potential for bias. That's what the question's asking. And we would say in that number five, yes, there does appear. Yes, there is a potential for bias. We're not saying that it is bias. We're just saying that we should really look at that data because of who collected it. There's a potential for bias because the outcome of the survey or the outcome uh, for this group is to oppose meat and dairy products, but they have major funding from a foundation to support animal protection. Are they, are they cooking the data and putting on an output that's in favor of who their supporters are? There is a potential for that, and so we want to look at that data. Um, the next question is asking this question is the data sound or flawed so again sound data means it was collected in a good way flawed data means it wasn't so let's re read this researchers at Yale University conduct a wide variety of clinical trials by using subjects who volunteer after reading advertisements looking for volunteers and they're gonna say that this is flawed and you know why? Because the data was from a volunteer sample, right? If I go back up to their terminology, the data was a voluntary response, right? That guy right there, that voluntary response, all right? And so we don't that data is not as good as it could be now when would it not be flawed when would it be sound it would be sound if they collected the data randomly or you know some type of situation drew names out of a hat anything like that would be a non-flawed or sound um, data collection now the last idea that we need to talk about in this section that comes up is something called statistical significance and there's a wonderful definition in the book Signi sorry I'm spelling things wrong here let me get a um, eraser here significance okay a result is statistically significant if it happens but had a very low chance 
of happening. That is a chance less than 5%. So, for example, um, the other, right now, um, as I'm making this video, it's just before the start of school, and there have been a lot of fires in California, many of which were started by lightning. And there was a very low chance of lightning striking in the summer because we just don't typically have the rain in the summertime in California. And therefore, it was a statistically significant event for that to take place because it had a very low chance of happening. Now, they're going to let you know what the chance of happening. And that chance of happening is that chance of happening um, without any kind of influence at all going on. That's what we call statistically significant. Though, so ask about practically significant. Sometimes things are statistically significant, but it doesn't make a big deal in our lives. Um, and so, it's from a practical standpoint, you wouldn't change what you do, even though it's statistically significant. And you'll see those in the book. If we go down to this um, example down here, um, let me just come in here and make this a little bit wider of a space. It says, in a study of the Kingman diet and exercise programs, 40 subjects lost an average of 22 pounds. That's a lot of pounds. That's practically significant, right, to lose 22 pounds in a diet. There's about a 1% chance of getting such results from a program that has no effect. So if this diet was not really a diet, just kind of an even keel thing, it wasn't effective in losing weight, to have 40 subjects lose an average of 22 pounds would have a chance, a 1% chance. That 1% is less than 5%, so it had a very low chance of happening, and it happened. This is statistically significant. and practically significant. Right? To lose 22 pounds is a lot. And so that's where the practicality comes from. So again, let me restate that. There was a 1% chance of a group of 40 people losing 22 pounds on average. That is less than the 5% let me write it as a percentage. I was going to write it as a decimal. The 5% benchmark, right? Anything less than 5% chance of happening, if it happens, that's statistically significant. And so that's why I'm choosing to call it statistically significant. Here we had a study of 12 subjects who paid to have a course that increased their IQ. That the average IQ increase for those 12 um subjects was three IQ points. Now, if these people did not participate in the course but just took the IQ test again, there would be a 25% chance of having their IQ raised by three points. Because 25% is not less than, that's the way I'm going to word it, 5%. This is not statistically significant. There is a high probability, right? There's a high chance, a 25% chance that just showing up and taking the IQ test again would have raised their IQ three points. So they kind of wasted their money. It was not a statistically significant event to have an average of a three IQ point raise. And therefore, um, we won't call it statistically significant as we go through. Okay. So that's kind of a... A picture of what is happening in this section. There's just these set, the core ideas that you'll run through in the homework. And so let me know if there's something that comes up. Send me an email um, or whatever, um, and I'll let the class know if there's some questions that come up um, that seem to be common. I'll post other videos in order to help. But I think you'll do fine in this section. But reach out if it's cumbersome.